In this section, our goal is to be able to factor trinomials and binomials and solve quadratic equations by factoring. The process of factoring trinomials is to first make sure the quadratic is in standard form. Remember that looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c. Then check for a GCF to factor out. And then write the trinomial with four terms. Finally, factor by grouping. Examples, factor each polynomial. So is this in standard form? That's our first check. Is the squared term first? Yes. Is the x term next? Yes. Is the constant term last? Yes. So we're good with the first one. Next, check for a greatest common factor. This has two, but I can't factor out two from 13 or from seven. This has x, but this constant term does not. So there is no GCF, but I did check. Next, write the trinomial with four terms. How do we do that? We take the leading coefficient and the constant term, notice I circled the sign, we multiply them together. Two times negative seven makes negative 14. Then I try to think of all of the factors of negative 14 that will add up to make negative 13. So I could do this in my head, such as, I know that negative 14, well, I did two times negative seven, but I also did, I also could do negative two times positive seven, but I could also write one times negative 14 and negative one times 14. Now I could continue to do it like that or use my calculator and go to y equals and plug in negative 14 divided by x. Because remember, when we're thinking of what to multiply by, we can also think of negative 14 divided by what will give us another number. So I go to my calculator. Let's write down that we did that. In the calculator, y equals negative 14 divided by x. Then we look at the table. So back to our calculator. Now let's look at the table, second table, and let's look for two integers. So the three isn't good to pick because the other number is a decimal, not an integer. But see how I have one and negative 14, two and negative seven, not four because that's a decimal, not five because that's a decimal, seven works because these are whole numbers, seven and negative two, so just like I did in my head, but using my table. I could even scroll up to the negatives to get those values as well. So I'm looking for what adds together to make that middle term for negative 13. So in my calculator, I'm going to add negative two plus seven. That does not make negative 13. Negative one plus 14, that does not make negative 13. The one that makes negative 13 is one times negative 14, one plus negative 14. This combination right here, when I add those, I get negative 13. So I rewrite my trinomial, put the two x squared in the front, keep it in the front, but now the negative 13x, I'm going to use the numbers one and negative 14. It's helpful to put the negative number first. So I'm going to write negative 14x and then positive one x, and then my last term, the constant term, negative seven. Now I have four terms. Finally, we factor by grouping. So we look at the first group and we look for a greatest common factor. I see that I have 
2 in common in both of these because I can write 14 as 2 times 7. 2x squared can be written as 2 times x times x and negative 14x can be written as negative 2 times 7 times x. So what's in common? The 2 and the x. So 2x and what's left over? x minus 7. Let's look at the second group. Positive 1x minus 7. This I can write as positive 1 times x and 7 I can't break down but I can write it as positive 1 times negative 7 or negative 7 times positive 1 so that I see what is in common a positive 1 and that's it. So positive 1 and what's left over? Positive x minus 7. Remember when we factor by grouping it's working when we have the same binomial and we factor out that binomial. So now I factor out x minus 7 and I see what's left over 2x plus 1. And there's my factored form of this trinomial. I have factored by grouping. If I want to, I can check by distributing this again and see if I get what I started with. Would you like to pause the video, try the next one, come back and see how you did? So number two. Let's go through our checklist. Make sure the quadratic is in standard form. x squared, x constant. Yep. Next, check for a greatest common factor. I don't see anything in common in these three terms. Next, write the trinomial with four terms. So remember, we take the leading coefficient and the constant and we multiply them. Four times five, that makes 20. Now I can go to my calculator and I can go into y equals and I can type 20 divided by x to help me to find what multiplies to make 20. Let's go to the table. I can see some negative numbers do that and I can see some positive numbers do that. And remember, I don't want anything with the decimal, just with the whole numbers. I'm looking to see what adds up to negative 12. What adds up to negative 12? I need to be in the negative numbers for that. So I'm going to scroll up to the negative numbers. Negative 4 plus negative 5 makes negative 9. That's not it. I need negative 12. Negative 10 plus negative 2, that does it. So that's what I'm going to use. I see negative 10 and negative 2 will add up to negative 12. So let's rewrite this trinomial into four terms. 4x squared. Since both of these are negative, it doesn't really matter which one I put first. Minus 10x, minus 2x, and then my constant term plus 5. Now we factor by grouping. Looking at the first group, what's in common? What divides into both 4 and 10? 2. So I'm going to factor out 2. What else is in common? x squared and x, I can factor out an x. What's left over? 4 divided by 2 makes 2, and x squared divided by x makes x. Negative 10 divided by 2 makes negative 5, and x divided by x, all my x's are gone. Let's check that by distributing. 2 times 2 is 4, x times x is x squared, 2x times negative 5 is negative 10x. Looks good. Negative 2x plus 5. What's in common? I don't see anything in common here. 
So when I don't see anything in common, I take out a 1. And when I see a negative in the front, I also take out the negative. So negative 1. What's left over, this becomes positive, And this changes the sign as well. And I see that I'm doing it correctly because I have the same binomial in both groups. So now I'm going to factor out this common binomial, 2x minus 5. And what's left over, 2x minus 1. And now I have my factors that multiply to make this trinomial. Number three, let's think to ourselves, is this in standard form, x squared, x constant? Yep. How about a GCF, a greatest common factor? I do have one this time. I see that I can factor out a two from each of these terms. All of them can be divided by two. So the GCF that I'm going to take out is two. So think of this as two times x squared. Think of this as two times seven x. And think of this as two times 10. And see, I can factor out that common two. So I'm taking my GCF out. Left over x squared plus 7x plus 10. Now we need to write our leftover trinomial in four terms. So we look for our leading coefficient. Doesn't look like anything, but we always have one of them. And our constant term and multiply them. 1 times 10 makes 10. Now we can go to our calculator and find what numbers multiply to make 10 that add up to our middle number, our coefficient of x, which is 7 this time. So y equals, this time, 10 divided by x. Go to the table, and I want positive 7. So get out of the negatives, and let's see what adds up to positive 7. Oh, and there it is, 2 and 5. 2 plus 5 makes 7. So that's what I'm thinking for the 10, 2 and 5, because 2 plus 5 makes 7. So let's rewrite what we have, except for the middle term, we'll substitute the 2 and the 5. 2 x squared instead of 7x plus 2x plus 5x, and then the 10. And then we'll factor by grouping. Notice the 2 that I factored out. I'm just letting it hang out there while I factor what's inside my parentheses. So looking at this first group, I see there's an x in common. And what's left over? x plus 2. In the second group, I see that both of these can be divided by positive 5. And what's left over? x plus 2. 5x divided by 5 is x. 10 divided by 5 is 2. Now I see I'm doing it correctly because I have the same binomial left over. Now let's not forget that we still have this 2 outside of the whole parentheses. So I'm taking out this common factor of x plus 2 and what's left over x plus 5. Now I still have this 2, so let's not forget that. Three factors this time, 2, x plus 2, and x plus 5. Number four, standard form, x squared, x and 6. Constant term. Any common factor? GCF? Not this time. So, leading coefficient times constant. 1 times 6 makes 6. 
Let's think about what multiplies to make 6. 6 divided by x. Looking at our table, we're trying to think of what adds up to that middle number. Negative 1. What multiplies to make 6 and adds up to negative 1? Well, my positives won't add up to negative 1, so let's look at the negatives. That adds up to negative 7, negative 5, negative 5, negative 7. I don't see anything that adds up to negative 1. All of these are decimals, so I don't find anything. If I can't find anything that adds up to that middle number, then I'm not going to be able to factor this. So this one is prime. Number five, is this in standard form? Well, I have x squared. Where's my x term? I can write this with an x term. I don't have any x terms, so that means I have zero x. And then negative nine, my constant term. I don't see a common factor, so let's get to the place where we write this in four terms. My leading coefficient is one, and my constant is negative 9. 1 times negative 9 makes negative 9. What multiplies to make negative 9 and adds up to 0? How about negative 3 and positive 3? That does it. So let's rewrite this. x squared, the middle term, we can write negative 3x plus 3x and the constant term minus nine. And then we'll factor by grouping. The first group can factor out an x with an x minus three left over. The second group, I can factor out a positive three with an x minus three left over. I see x minus three in both groups, so I factor out the x minus three. And what's left over? x plus 3. So using the same technique, we can get to the answer x plus 3 times x minus 3. But when I see a binomial and I see that both of them are perfect squares, that's called a difference of two squares. And there's an easier way to do that than this long process. When I see a difference, of two squares, like a squared minus b squared, it always factors into two binomials, a plus b times a minus b. Difference, remember, means subtract. So I'm subtracting. Squares, like a times a and b times b. One is positive, one is negative, and I use one of each of the factors in each of the binomials. So let's do these examples, factoring each polynomial the easy way, using the difference of squares pattern. So I see a difference, that's important. y squared is y times y, and 25 is five times five. So the pattern is two binomials. Each binomial has a y in it, each binomial has a five in it. One is positive and one is negative because that's how we get the middle term to cancel out. And just like that, I have my factors the quick way. Maybe pause the video, try the last one on your own and come back and see how you did. So I see subtract. This is perfect squares because 36 is six times six and x squared is x times x, so this is six x times six x. One is one times one. So I can make two binomials. Six x goes in each one. One goes in each one and positive and negative to cancel out the middle term. And we're done.